The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knopsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? I'm Jeff Upson, joined by Eric Knopsnyder, and you're tuned in to the PA Power Podcast. Well, Eric, there's snow on the ground, so that must mean wrestling season is upon us. It is, and it's a great way to start the, the weekend. Uh, already hit the ground running. Yeah, this is a pretty incredible first uh, open weekend. I just It's crazy to think that the season's already here and uh, we're, as we're going to get started. So uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the, the opening weekend results, uh, some teams that competed over this, this weekend, um, and talk a little bit about some things that stood out to us. Uh, we'll also talk about our, our media day that we held last weekend at Pitt Johnstown. Um, and some other notable news. So uh, kicking off right away, the, the biggest news out of this week was the eligibility hearing of Eric Hong, uh, who is now at North Allegheny. The Whippeal had a hearing on, on his uh, transfer from Kiski Prep to North Allegheny, and the, the Whippeal found Eric Hong to be ineligible to compete for the North Allegheny Tigers uh, wrestling program. Um, and I, I, was, I can't say I was surprised by this well, I mean, a little bit. I, I was a little bit, just considering he's he's coming from a, a, a prep school. It's not like he's coming from, um, you know, a fellow Whippeo program. Uh, Eric, what, your thoughts on that? I, honestly, I never know how to read these. Uh, the Sometimes the, the ones that I think are going to get shot down get approved and vice versa. So I'm never one to predict what, what's going to happen in these hearings. And now he'll have a, a chance to appeal this to the PIAA, correct? Yeah, that is correct, and and he does plan on doing that. Um, and I, I know Coach Sonny Abe would wants to have Eric in his in his room and um, on in the lineup. It, some of the the reasons for the whip deal that they said was well, they felt because of the the relationship between Eric and Sonny prior to his high school career that that had an effect on it. And Sonny brings up a good point. He says, well, look. He had more than enough opportunities to move to – he could have went to Central Catholic. Uh, Sonny was a coach at Central Catholic. That's where uh, Vincenzo Joseph went. Uh, Joseph and Hong grew up together, wrestling together. So he very well could have just left the the um, Riverview School District where he, he grew up and went to Central Catholic. Uh, right, to, and it wouldn't have even been a, an issue there. Right. Because if he would have done it in ninth grade, it would have just been enrolling at a Catholic school. Exactly, um, and so now he goes to he goes to Georgetown Prep in Maryland. Then he decides to go to Kiskey Prep, and now he's back at North Allegheny. He could have went to North. He could have moved to North Allegheny last year when Sonny was named the the head coach. So uh, for for them to say, well, we believe that the relationship between this is a reason why we feel like there was a recruitment, um, which is I, I can't. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to to swallow if the PIAA um, does not overturn this. Um, I'm not really... I mean, because uh, the way things are... I mean, this is a whole Pandora's box here. I mean, if we, we talk about this, we'll be here for, for four hours talking about the, <laughs> the transfer can, can of worms here. Um, and that this this hearing did have a, a pretty um, significant impact on... I, I just was reading some forums and a lot of people were, were talking about this. But there, you don't hear so much about the Verclear and transfer. You don't hear a no, lot, no, a lot about that. much at all about it. You know, like people up in arms saying, well, this was clearly a blatant... Uh, you know, no one says anything. So, I mean, it's it's... The Whippeal is, I guess it's on whatever day you get them. Uh, you know, <laughs> Monday hearings seem to be the worst ones for, for wrestlers. So uh, I'll be interested to see. I don't have any details on when that appeal is. Uh, if we do get that, I, I will put that out there for you. But uh, keep keep that in mind. So, um, it, which, which North Allegheny, they were in action this, this weekend uh, at the Eastern area. And, and they did pretty well for themselves. But not as good as Kiski area, uh, who, who I'm very high on this year. Kiski had a phenomenal Eastern area. Uh, tournament at Gateway High School. So a lot of big results coming from there. Yeah, they did. Uh, really rolled to that victory, too. 298 team points for Kiski area compared to 216.5 for North Allegheny. I mean, that's an impressive performance. Yeah, it, it was, Eric. And there was a lot of you know familiar names there that, that finished uh, atop of the, the, the podium. Um, some, some big names, but some new names as well. Uh, Curtis Phipps from Norwin. He won the, the 106 pound championship. He beat, uh, Jordan Waters from West Allegheny, also a, a freshman. Um, and, and 
returning state qualifier Jacob Downing, he won at uh, 113. He pinned Darren Miller of Kiske area in the finals, and, and that's a huge win for him. Remember, Darren Miller was a guy we saw down at Super 32 for Kiske who uh, knocked off some pretty pretty big names. Yeah, as you said, great win there for Downing. Yeah, and he sort of came onto the scene last year uh, qualifying for the state tournament. But I do see Darren drop into 106, and it, maybe Downing does as well. But uh, I know Miller's a little undersized, so he'll probably jump down. Another freshman, Ed Scott from Dubois, uh, he was one of our top incoming freshmen for, for the season. He finishes in first at 120 pounds, picked up some quality wins over some upperclassmen. Uh, you know, he, he pinned Manny Dovchek from Bentworth in, in the uh, semifinals and then beat Kellen Lynch from Thomas Jefferson in, in the uh, finals. So he, he rolls to a, a championship title. And then, of course, Gavin Teasdale just does what Gavin Teasdale does at 126 pounds. Yeah, not not much of a surprise there. The Ed Scott one, though, that one, I was interested to see how, how he's going to do this season. I know we've talked a, a good bit about him, uh, how he did in the, the off season in the summer, and really looking forward to, to see what he can do this year, and certainly didn't disappoint in his first uh, performance in a varsity singlet. Not at all. And, and Gavin Teasdale, he, I mean, he defeated fellow PIAA medalist Noah Levitt from, from Kiski in the finals at 126 pounds. Noah's no easy out, uh, so to speak. But I was really impressed with Penn Hill's Justin Perkins, the sophomore last year. He was very close to, to making it to the States last year. He comes in third. Uh, he, he picked up some solid wins. He beat Dalton Woodrow from Dubois, then dropped a 7-6 match to Levitt, and then came back in the in the consolation finals. He beat Nick Coy from Penn Trafford, one nothing to finish third. So uh, sophomore Justin Perkins looked, looked good to me. Uh, also 132, Colby Ho from Dubois, another Dubois guy, uh, really just uh, under the radar in my opinion. He comes out and wins the 132-pound bracket. First, he knocks off Job Chisco, who, by the way, is up to 132 from 106. Yeah, that's that's a big jump. You wonder how he's going to be able to handle that if if that's something that's just – you know, early in the season, and then you would expect him probably to be dropping. I, but I, uh, definitely a big jump. I don't think he is going to drop, Eric. Uh, really? Because I saw him when we went to a uh, Young Guns practice uh, a month or so ago. I saw him wrestling around. He looked big. He looked huge. Uh, so I, I can't see him dropping too too much further. Maybe to 126 at the, the least. But uh, job loss to Ho in the, the semis. And Ho beat Luke Landefeld from North Allegheny in the finals, 11-5. So talk about a guy who came in, seeded fourth, and, and just beat the, the top two seeds there. Uh, pretty impressive for, for him um, at 132 pounds. And then, of course, Cam Connor also making a big jump. He He's from Kiske area. He jumps up from 113 pounds to 138. And a lot of people were worried. They said, well, we're not sure how Cam's going to handle this this jump in weight. You know, how can you how can you really judge how he's going to be effective? Well, he, he came out here and he, he won. Won the championship title at 138 pounds um, for for Kiski area, so he handled it quite well, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I think he he, <laughs> he battled uh, Zach Steadford from North Allegheny, who's uh, you know those two. When we're talking about North Allegheny and Kiski area battling for the top spot in the Whippeal, that's a huge match in them. That's a toss up match, and Cam won that three nothing. So uh, you know that's that's a that's a swing swing bout for for the Cavaliers there. Uh, at 138 pounds so it's it's early but already looking you know shaping up for the the uh dual season and then joey bloomer the recently uh committed to penn penn state joey comes in and wins the 145 pound bracket but you know he he didn't put up huge numbers and he normally doesn't uh but he came away with some some uh victories over some notable guys um one guy that stuck stuck out in my mind was luke montgomery from bethel park this guy's a freshman um, he really came on pretty strong in this tournament, advancing into the semifinals. But he bounces back and he takes fourth. So for for a freshman of, of uh, you know who wasn't really on the radar, so to speak, he wasn't one of the big names. He wasn't on our top incoming freshman list uh, to come in at 145 pounds and finish fourth in his first tournament. It's pretty impressive. Absolutely. Whenever you get up into that that 145, 152, anything above that, if you're making noise as a freshman, you know that that's a a real talent, not to knock what the lightweights are doing, but you look at a, a six-pound bracket, and a lot of times it's going to be 75 or 80 percent freshmen in it. Yeah, and another guy, Nick Delp from Kiskari, up up uh, 152 pounds. He was on our list as a top incoming freshman. He advances in the finals. He drops a match to Dom uh, Davido from Plum, who uh, won the tournament. He uh, was able to come away with a championship. So another freshman who has big imp- implications on the team tournaments. Uh, 
part of that. Nick Delp does as a freshman. He came in from the seventh seed and finished second. So uh, pretty solid performance from him. And then Cam Coy. Uh, up at 160 pounds, I do expect him to come down to 152 pretty sh- pretty shortly. Uh, but Cam came away with the title. I uh, believe this is his fourth title. I believe this is his hmm. fourth Eastern Area uh, title. I remember watching him as a freshman go at it uh, with Jake Hankson when those two were were freshmen together. But Cam comes in just just rolls through the competition as as expected. So um, pretty pretty standard there. Yeah, not not a big surprise there. Kind of what we've come to expect from Cam. Yeah, Sean Hoover from North Allegheny. He comes in, wins the, the championship at 170 pounds. He was banged up a little bit last year towards the end, but he was able to to come back. And and again, when we look at the dual team, he beats Brad Nagy from Kiski area uh, in the finals 4-2. So talk about another match with with huge implications for our, our dual tournament. Uh, Brad Nagy is a third seed. Sean was the first seed. So uh, Sean was able to squeeze out a 4-2 win. Another three, you know, that's only a three-point decision uh, on, the, on the scoreboard. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, obviously, we're very early in the season, and I just know, get ex- I just get excited, Eric. <laughs> I just I, I just get excited. Just, just relax a little bit. We got you know, we've been, got time, Jeff. I've been we've doing got time. I've been doing matchups. You know? In fact, I was talking about that this weekend at the Ironman. So, you know, I, you so. might not know this, but they might bump around a little bit in dual meets. They don't always go. I'm to well. Trial. I'm well aware of that, Eric, and that's what okay. I was. That's what I was talking about. Is the flexibility. Let's <laughs> let's just continue on here, okay? Nino Bonacorsi debuting at 182 pounds. He's ranked number one this state by yours truly he uh comes away with the championship title at 182 pounds really doesn't have much of a, a problem getting through uh anyone there jake woodley returning state champion also debuting at 195 pounds he was a uh, champion uh for uh the the tigers at 195 pounds didn't really again had really no issues coming away with that that championship title uh tom Starr from kiski i'm not going to bring up the duel tournament the dual implications <laughs> here so I'll, I'll just but tom Starr comes away with a win at 220 pounds a championship title um for a guy who doesn't have a ton of varsity experience i was pretty impressed with him uh able to come away with that championship at 285 or 220 but that was followed up by isaac reed from kiski area who comes in and wins the championship at, at heavyweight for for kiski so yeah like you said eric earlier the kiski air cavaliers i mean they just came in and dominated 298 uh, to North Allegheny's 216. So clearly, pretty pretty solid performance here for, for Kiski area. Well, and if you look down the, the list here, we have a list of the, the top six guys of each weight class. And, I mean, Kiski is, is in virtually every weight class. They had a top six guy. Yeah, they're they're pretty good. They're pretty solid. But I still and I, I got to say, I, 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 we talked a little bit about it before. I was impressed by Altoona. Uh, not traditionally a, a team that gets a lot of recognition, but they also have a number of guys, particularly in the heavyweights. There, you know, top six guys, and they have yet to get uh, C.J. Manley on the mat. Right, but we're going to get C.J. here because we talked to him at our media day uh, last week, uh, last Saturday at Pitt Johnstown, PA Power Wrestling and and Tribune Democrat. They uh, we had our our little first annual media day hosted at Pitt Johnstown. A big shout out to, to uh, athletic director and, and wrestling head coach Pat Bacora for uh, helping us out and assisting in, in that whole uh, whole adventure for us. But really great experience, and we were able to sit down with CJ and talk to him about the season. He is, as Eric, you said, he is out right now. He had a, a labrum surgery, but we will talk to him a lot more about that and when he's expected to come back. But I do agree with you, Eric. The the Altoona team did come out and pretty much uh you know they they held their own against a pretty solid lineup uh in terms of the eastern area not not a whole lot of you know uh, there's a lot of talent there yeah absolutely and and altoona's as i said they've been a team that's not too far away from me so i i see a little bit of them and you know at times over the years they'd have one or two guys you know uh uh a state place runner here and there but nothing as far as team depth goes and i think they probably have more of that this year than they've had in a long long time well yeah i mean i, I although i think the the you know it, the future looks bright they are they have a lot of seniors and they have a lot of holes as well so uh while it is promising it, it's it's they still have a lot to i mean they, they again they're in district six with Central Mountain, Mifflin County, those guys. I mean, there's, there's right, right. I'm, I'm not saying they're going to be contending for for the state duels or anything like that. It's just nice to see a program that hasn't been up there have some depth. And as you said, they're senior heavy. They're going to be losing a lot of guys after this year. But just to to get that and generate some excitement around the program is good for the sport. 
I hear you, Eric, and I agree with you. Uh, let's let's shift gears to the, the Chartiers Houston Invitational. Pretty solid tournament. Uh, this is one of the longest standing opening tournaments uh, around the state, but uh, a lot of a lot of Whippeal guys, uh, programs coming in to, to compete at the Char Houston Invitational. Uh, did anything stand off the page for you, Eric, when you when you looked through the results? Uh, there were, you know, I'm kind of looking since I'm, I'm mostly the double A guy. I look a lot more at that than than the triple A stuff. Well, this was uh, this was a primarily a, a, a tri- there was right, a primarily right. triple or uh, sorry double A teams here. You, were, you still get did get a lot of champions coming from triple A, just uh, kind of the, the way things go. But uh, 145 really jumped out at me. You had Cody Kamara from uh, Freedom. He beat Dallas Balsick of South Park in the final there. A uh, couple really good double uh, A guys going at it, so that was an interesting one to me. Uh, also, Josh Kuzlock from uh, Chartiers Houston had a nice tournament, winning the 138 bracket. So some some guys that uh, you know are are proven guys, but really kind of stepping up and getting off to a good start to the season. You know that 145 five pound bracket, Eric, was just really deep. I, when I first saw those brackets, I was like, "Wow, this is this is going to be a, a doozy." Because especially you had our, our one of our top income incoming freshman Thane Lawrence from Frazier. He comes out and uh, wins his first match by Tech Fall, then comes away with a 3-0 three, three decision over Hunter Milligan from Albert Gallatin. Then he only drops a 6-3 match to Cody Kamara. So, uh, you know, obviously 6-3 could have could have been, you know, as good as a Tech Fall based on, you know, the way they wrestled. But still, he held his own against one of the top guys in the state who uh, is, is going to be in contention for a state medal. Absolutely, what uh, what Thane did didn't uh, didn't do anything to diminish his standing as a top com- incoming freshman. He ends up finishing fifth, and what you said, uh, you know, a very good bracket. Whenever you've got Kamar, you've got Balsack, you've got Mike Kusick from uh, South Fayette, uh, a, a lot of top guys there in in the Southwest region in Double A, and he was able to acquit himself quite nicely in that bracket. I mean, finishing ahead of some some tough seniors as well. I mean, uh, John McPherson from North Hills, he was able to, to come back and finish f- uh, fourth. As you said, Kusick from uh, South Fayette finished third. Clearly, Thane is putting himself on the map, and uh, I'm pretty excited about to see where where he finishes up uh, this this season because I think it, it, it he could be a, a shocker. Yeah, and he's like he's one that I haven't seen in person yet. Uh, I'm interested. I'm not sure when I'm going to run into him because Frazier is obviously not one that you get to see a whole lot of sometimes. But uh, definitely interested in, in checking him out in person. Sammy Hillegas from uh, North Hills, who was number two on our top incoming freshman, uh, he comes away with the championship title at 120 uh, 20 pounds. He pretty much just dominated one. He didn't get out of the first period. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talk he, about uh, acquitting yourself quite nicely, huh? Yeah. He just goes out there and, and shows why he's been so highly touted. I mean, I, I will say the 120 was not a very deep weight by any stretch of the imagination, but for him to come out and get all first period falls, pretty impressive stuff. Absolutely. You look at the times, 34, 152, 112, and 139. As you said, uh, the, the, I mean, he barely even broke a sweat in most of those, I would imagine. Spencer Lee-like. Yes. Uh, Pine Richland, I thought, had a, a phenomenal tournament. Alex Salas from, from Pine Richland won at 126 pounds, followed up by Hunter Baxter. Hunter's about six foot four, and he's wrestling 132. <laughs> he's so tall. I saw him over the summer. I was like, man, you're so tall. He's going to Maryland. He came away with a, a championship uh, title at 132 pounds, again, in dominate fashion. Two, two tech falls and two fall. I'm sorry, two falls and a tech fall uh, in, the, in the finals there. So uh, Kuzlock, like you said, at 138 pounds, I thought he wrestled very well, coming away with that championship title. Um, but overall, just I really like the the Char, Char Houston tournament. It's a good uh, first tournament for those guys. Yeah, and another double-A team that kind of stuck out to me was Freedom had a nice showing there. Uh, I kind of knew a, a lot of the, the Freedom guys, you know, knew what they had coming in. But they had a couple other guys that, that surprised me a little bit and maybe not making the finals but getting a third or a fourth or a fifth place and showing that they really have some depth. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you there, Eric. A lot of depth there um, in, in terms of what, where we're looking at. Uh, Tim Wallace from Albert Gallatin. Came away with the championship title at 170 pounds. Uh, sophomore Dominic Fundy from Best Center, who really surprised a lot of people last year uh, when he when he advanced into the the state tournament, uh, he comes away with the championship title at 182 pounds. So he's following up his his nice sophomore or uh, freshman campaign. 
Uh, Eli Grape from Upper St. Clair, who's going to Lehigh next year, he came away with three falls, three first period falls, and then a major decision to claim the 195 pound bracket. He was uh, he's a two time. PIAA state medalist. Then you got at 220, Jacob Slinger, uh, sophomore from Upper St. Clair. So the two USC guys right back to back. Slinger came away with the championship title at, at 220. Uh, and then Sean Bright from North Hills. He got the heavyweight title. He's a senior, uh, always been in the mix at, at heavyweight. So he comes away with a, a championship title at 285. So an overall two solid tournaments in the Whippeal, the Eastern Area, and Shar Houston. Yeah, great way to start the season. You know, give us, a, as we do our rankings, kind of uh, something to, to build on and look and see where guys are and, and how they're starting off the season. Uh, a lot of factors to take in, but uh, definitely to get some results out there and, and kind of put together a profile really helps. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Eric. And uh, let's let's head a little bit west. So I was at the Ironman. So this is the first time I was at the Ironman to cover the tournament uh, before, and this was it, it was quite a quite a showing for for Pennsylvania. I think it was a, a one of the best performances Pennsylvania's had um, at, at the the tournament in, in quite a number of years. Um, so I was very impressed with the way. Pennsylvania guys wrestled, uh, specifically some some guys from District 11. Um, one of our top income, well, the top incoming freshman, uh, Bo Bartlett from Wyoming Seminary, who, who was not only the top rated freshman in Pennsylvania, but the nation. He comes out and uh, he was a number one seed, which I was surprised at first because, I, I mean, I don't, I was just I'm used to the Powerade where Powerade, the freshman, I mean, you, it doesn't matter what you did. Spencer Lee wasn't the top seed when he was a freshman. Uh, so I was sort of surprised Bo got the, the top seed at 120, but he proved everyone, uh, everyone right in the sense because he came away with the championship title. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty envious, I got to admit. Uh, originally, we were supposed to go out there together, and my work schedule kind of changed. I wasn't able to go out there. So, uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear all your thoughts on it. You know, it, what, what was the biggest takeaway for you? What what was the biggest thing that jumped out at you about the, the Iron Man and the performances you saw there? District 11 is tough. Uh, Becca, <laughs> Becca. And, breaking news. Breaking news. Becca and Nazareth are going to be now, – now, I'll say this. They're, they're tough. But they they both have some areas where they need much improvement, um, and and I, both guys both teams had some some guys out of the lineup maybe uh, due to football or injuries. Um, so, but I, I'm I'm it's the two the two top teams in the state the two top ranked teams in class double uh, A and triple A were there Reynolds top team in in double A and Becca top team in triple A were there. Um, a lot of talented Pennsylvania wrestlers there. Um, so the biggest takeaway for me was, you know, obviously Spencer Lee coming away with his third title. Spencer was pushed a little he bit. Was. I mean, people look at the, you know, they, they see it though. Oh, he won seven, three in the finals. Man, he, he must've almost lost that. And, you know, Spencer was never, he was never in trouble. Uh, and no, I'm, no, you're right. I and I'm completely, that. I'm completely biased. I, I know there it. was a, a first period shot by uh, Joe Silva that he did get in deep and you don't even expect to see that on Spencer Lee. You know, he's raised the bar so high that anytime anyone comes close to scoring on him, it's a shock. And that, that did get me a little bit. But, yeah, came back, got a first period takedown, escape in the second, another takedown. It's 5 nothing. Gets another takedown in the third. It's 7 nothing. You think he's cruising. But, uh, you know, give Silver credit. He's a extremely good wrestler. I mean, one of the top guys in the country, I think, at any weight. And, and he proved that, coming back, getting an escape, and then a takedown at the buzzer to, to close it up a little bit. I, you know, and I, I went back and I looked – and. You know Spencer, someone we've we've been following for quite a number of years because of his injury, and he doesn't do any uh, folk style off season. So this was only his his first time wrestling uh, folk style in uh, first time in almost a year. Uh, wow. If you if you just if you take away those twelve matches he had last season when he won the state championship, just coming back at the tail end before the the sectional tournament. So, um, you know, it was interesting because he had to adjust to those guys uh, coming at him and, and getting deep on him, and he was able to to fend off those shots. Um, and he was having he was getting frustrated with uh, on top not being able to turn the guys. Um, you know, he was working the arms, and and I give credit to to Joe Silva. I mean. Spencer didn't have a, a bad tournament. He had a good tournament. Joey Silva's is that good. I mean, he, he's, yeah, he's, he's a very – We've seen him before, and he is. He's extremely good. Uh, full credit to him. And, you know, even though it was a, a 7 nothing lead for Spencer, I mean, Silva wasn't backing down. He's coming right at him. No, I mean, he, he got they, – they sort of bumped heads, and 
uh, Silva goes down like, almost right in front of me, and he, the look on his face was like, whoa. I, you know, he got hit by a, f- a freight train, and he started <laughs> putting up his the whirly bird, and then the blood started coming out of his nose. So, he, you know, he got a big – he got a, a minute and a half break there to catch his breath, and as soon as he was done, boom, right at it. And I give him credit because, you know, he went right at Spencer and was able to, to finish that, that shot right at the end. Obviously, Spencer was disappointed with that. You know, if he doesn't tech fall or, or pen you, he's going to be upset. doesn't matter who you are. So that's just the expectations that Spencer has. So, um, But it was his third championship title, his third championship in three times. Uh, and he won the, the OW award there, uh, rightfully so in my opinion. But 126 was a, a solid bracket. Joey Silva beat Jordan Decatur in the semis. Decatur's the guy who knocked off Gavin Teasdale, who's number one. So clearly we're talking about some of the top guys in the nation. And I think Decatur lost again, didn't he? Wasn't he in the fifth place? He did. Match? He did. He didn't look too too hot in the the wrestlebacks. But um, uh, yeah, I, but another guy who just stood off the page, Sammy Sasso. My God. Yeah. What what a performance does, by him up there. Does he get better and better every time? I've never seen him wrestle so aggressive. And I think and, and I talked to Brad Wilson from Express uh, the Express Times in Easton about this. I think a lot of it has to do with Zach Horan, the former Nazareth wrestler and Central Michigan uh, wrestler, is in the room now. And Sammy's able to to have a different style with that. And Sammy just never stopped moving. He never he just kept on level changing, kept on going in for shots. Uh, he was just always moving his feet. Um, it, it was it was kind of like the Energizer Bunny. I mean, he was. Well, I, I'd be interested to to talk to him. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to him for a little while. But you and I were at uh, who's number one whenever he wrestled uh, Nick Lee, and Nick Lee was just like that, just boom, 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 and you know, just completely wore out Sammy. And I wonder, you know, if that's been something that's really forced him to to see that he he can step up that conditioning to another level and if that's you know really prompted him to keep going and and getting to where he is right now i mean i talked to him after the the match and interviewed him and i asked him i said hey look do you have a chip on your shoulder from from who's number one he was like yeah absolutely i mean he's he was very disappointed in that performance uh you know he was able to come back and win a super 32 championship and then obviously now the iron man championship but he didn't just win this he dominated uh in fact he won the um, the the award the Mendoza award for the most team points uh, collected by a wrestler so he earned well and he was dominant in Super Thirty Two too yeah yeah he was yeah he was so I mean and he's at one hundred forty five pounds I, I don't I don't know if he's going to go down either he looks f- perfectly fine at one hundred forty five so um, you know that that should be should be fun to watch I I, w- I was impressed with uh, a lot of the Nazareth guys I was impressed with Becca Mikey Labriola did what he does and just came away with the championship title at one hundred seventy pounds one eighty two Michael Beard another guy we saw who's number one struggled a little bit in like the quarterfinals he had a tough match with um a guy from from seminary and um i was i was a little unsure because steph stefanik was was wrestling really hot he was he looked really good now travis is is big for 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 his weight um i mean i'm sorry he's he's small for his weight he's big as in he could lose a few pounds uh, mm-hmm. so i don't see him staying at 182 pounds necessarily the entire season but uh beard was able to come out in the finals and just really dominate uh stefanik who's who's one of the top uh seniors in the nation flow national champion he's he's going to princeton uh he came away with a 17 to 9 uh major decision over stefanik so i michael beard is is a, a man among boys in my opinion at 182 yeah he's he's obviously the best in the nation probably as you said and you know he's proving it again at Iron Man, which brings together the best guys in the nation. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, Nico Camacho from Becca, uh, big heavyweight guy, and I, I I don't give him enough credit because I had him uh, lower on the the class of 2017 rankings. Uh, even though he beat Seth Janney, he beat Seth Janney again in the semifinals and came away with the championship title at 285. So he seemed really focused and really um, just a very very aggressive and and on the feet because uh we we saw him have a little bit trouble getting to the legs uh last year at the state tournament but he was able to to get to his offense and uh yeah i thought he had a a great tournament well i just wonder how the uh the beck and nazareth uh do do you have that one broken down yet Uh, yeah i mean i definitely (laughs) overanalyzed uh you know definitely overanalyzed Uh, coming down to the coin flip is that what you're saying 
Yeah, and and uh, who gives up the the most bonus points? That's uh, shocking to to <laughs> shock. I mean, most wrestling analysts, that is great yeah, insight. It's it's phenomenal insight. It's almost like that that you know the the Madden. If this guy runs the ball, he's going to score a touchdown. You know, well if they win the coin flip, they're probably going to win. Once he got into the end zone, there was no stopping him. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Re- I was impressed with Reynolds, top team in the in Double A. Reynolds came away. Uh, with with some medalist Cole Matthews dropped a, a pretty heartbreaking loss in the 138 pound finals. He's he, Cole Matthews is the best scrambler in my opinion. Uh, he just was in some funky positions <laughs> and he was able to. I was like, well, there's a take that. Wait, wait, he's taking him down. Uh, it was you know he was in. He's so flexible uh, and he, he's got such good hips that he was able to to just turn the tide on some guys when they're in so deep. Uh, but he does. He fell in in overtime seven five. Um, so I, you know, he was, he was upset because that's the second time now in a row he finished second at the Ironman. He was runner up last year, but Cole's going to come back strong. And, uh, another guy who's uh, going to have his hands full with, with the rest of the state. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I still go back to, to last year with the, the Brian Courtney match and, you know, just that, that, that bracket, you know, even the six months later, it's still hard to believe that one. Yeah, that's one we're going to be looking back for a long time now and, and, and talking about. I was impressed with Gavin Wilkerson from Reynolds. He's the transfer from uh, from Greenville. He was a state qualifier last year. He comes away with an eighth-place medal. Uh, pretty pretty impressive for, for him uh, going against the, the nation's top guys. And, and Joe uh, Lisi from Reynolds also came away with a seventh-place medal at 182. So both those guys are, are going to be key components to – uh, Reynolds' success. Their their heavyweight um, was able to win a few matches. Cole Rickert, who is a uh, PIAA state medalist who's going to pit, he's out with a, a foot injury or a leg injury of some sort. I saw him in a cast. Um, so I'm not sure when exactly he'll be back in the lineup, but Reynolds seems to be a, a, in good hands. Now, I'm not trying to stir anything up here, but that the Wilkerson one is one that flew under the radar as well. I didn't even realize about that. How did How did we not hear a whole lot about that one? Yeah, I, I just didn't. I mean, I knew about it for a few. I mean, probably like a month, I guess it was. But um, yeah, I don't know. That that flew under the radar because I mean, Reynolds and Greenville are so close together. I know, and I, I'm I mean, not it's, saying it's there was like, anything untoward about it. Nothing like that. I'm not trying to start anything like that. I have no idea what the situation was. But you would think that that would one that would obviously stir up some feelings on on the Greenville side. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's select- especially at being kind of the the little brother in the matchup for for all these years. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know. Um, maybe you're just being a pot stirrer and trying to, you know, just <laughs> let it, let it be, Eric. Um, can, we're we're gonna switch gears from Iron Man. Iron Man was was phenomenal. Great tournament. Uh, I thought Pennsylvania wrestled uh, just really good considering the circumstances. Uh, so I was really impressed with with all the the PA guys. So looking forward to seeing how they they transition uh, next week uh, to tournaments such as King of Mountain, Beast of the East, Sheets uh, Classic. So um, another tournament I, I really enjoy, and this is where I went last year. And if I wasn't at the Ironman, I'd be there again this year. Was the Cumberland Valley Kickoff Classic? A lot of a lot of tough District Three teams, but they also bring in uh, Dave Heckert from Cumberland Valley is able to bring in a lot of tough teams such as Easton and Cannon Mac. Uh, and by the way, um, Cannon Mac did pretty well, but Cumberland Valley also did did really well, coming away with a team championship. Uh, a lot of freshmen here that I really that really stood out to me. Um, we're going to talk about one of them, Garrett Ninehouse. But first, Will Bettencourt from Mannheim Central. He came away with the championship title at, at 106 pounds. He beat Nate Smith from Bishop McDevitt uh, in the finals. He beat him one nothing. So those are two top incoming freshmen. Um, Nate Smith was was much higher up on the top incoming freshmen than Bettencourt was. Uh, I, Bettencourt was, was honorable mention, but he did come away with the championship title at 106 pounds. So I was very impressed with uh, the way he wrestled and you know, it's it's great to see these these top incoming freshmen that you see. You know, you just analyze these names and the results so much, and you actually see that all come to you know fruition here. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, to actually get to put not just a name with the face or a face with the name, but a style and you know exactly how they wrestle. Because as you said, you can see these results for years coming up, but until you actually get to see them in person, it's really hard to to judge them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you, Eric. So the more wrestling we can see, the better. And, and thanks to Flow Wrestling, we can see a lot of it. So uh, at 113 pounds, Doug Zapp from Downingtown, he was able to come away with the championship title. He beat J- uh, Chase Shields 
from Bishop McDevitt, who was a returning PIAA state medalist. Uh, so Chase, uh, you know, had some some pretty big wins last year. He falls to, to Doug Zapp, so who's a returning state qualifier uh, out of District 1. So I was impressed with him, able to, to come away with the championship title um, at 113 pounds. 120 pounds, Matty Parker, uh, state runner-up from Penridge, senior who's going to Lehigh. He came away with the championship title, and he beats Logan Macri in the finals. That's a pretty good matchup. That's a heck of a matchup. And those two have, you know, they've, they've wrestled a lot before. Uh, actually, Matty Parker wrestled him last year in the Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic, um, which Parker won. So he's able to come away with a 5-1 decision. And Macri was one of those hot hands that we saw at Super 32 knock off some, some big names. Now, Macri did beat Brandon Meredith from Springford, who was a state medalist last year. So Macri, he was the third seed, and he came, came out and uh, wrestled tough. And, and was able to get to the finals to have that chance to face Matty Parker. But uh, this was a huge step for Matty Parker, who I know really, really, really wants a state championship. Yeah, and, you know, you can build that. You can start off right now. You, you get that momentum going and just kind of build the confidence that can kind of carry you into to Hershey and then just uh, do what you got to do there. Another freshman. It's starting to sound like a broken record. Jonathan Myers from Easton. One of our top incoming freshmen uh, was very highly rated coming into the season. He finishes as the champion at 126 pounds and a pretty interesting weight. Um, he comes away with the championship beats uh, another fellow incoming freshman, Tanner Uptograph from Bishop McDevitt. He beats him 8-5 and then beats Russell Zimmerman 6-5 in the finals. And Zimmerman from Cumber Valley, who's a junior, he came away had an 8-7 decision over Ben Radner from Contra Out South, who's who was a state qualifier a couple years back. He's he's a solid guy. He's battled some injuries, but Russell Zimmerman, guy who really came out of nowhere, to, I wasn't expecting him to be in the finals. Um, but it's Jonathan Myers from Easton area who comes away at the championship. So first year coach Jamar Billman has his, his first champion at the Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic with uh, Jonathan Myers. I heard this somewhere earlier, Jeff, but I believe District Eleven is good. I don't know who told you that, but whoever it is is really smart. <laughs> Austin DeSando is up at 132 pounds. He came away with a championship title uh, there in a in a match with with a fellow three time state medalist. Or not, he does not a fellow. He actually owns more state medals than Austin does. But uh, Chandler Olson uh, from Shippensburg, he's a, a three time state medalist. He beats Wyatt Long from Cumber Valley, who's always been on the one of the top guys in the state. Beats him in the semis three one, but then DeSando comes out and beats him six three. Um, so DeSano, Austin is, is wrestling pretty tough at 132 pounds. So it will be interesting to see if he's able to, if he's dropping or if he's staying at 132, uh, because, you know, he may just be thinking, Hey, I have a better chance of winning a state title than going after, you know, Spencer at 126. Yeah. I'm not sure a whole lot of people are, are anxious to drop to 26. If, if you can do okay at 32. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you are going to be too anxious. And actually in this match, uh, Colin Myers from Bullion Springs and Austin DeSano, both PA state runner-ups last year. DeSano tech followed him in two, wow. in two minutes and 48 seconds. Wow. 20 to 5. So, you know, clearly when he's on, he's on. And remember, Spencer Lee teched him in the state finals. Right. So uh, pretty impressive performance by Austin DeSano. I'm not saying I'm, I'm completely surprised. Zach Trampy uh, won his, his second – uh, Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic Championship. He won the the championship at 138 pounds. Um, you know, I'm not too surprised by that. He's you know, one of those guys that has always been. You know, he's one of the top ranked guys in the state last year. Sort of had a disappointing state tournament, but I think he's on pace to have another to have a final uh, good season here. John Pippa, two time state runner up from Bishop McDevitt, came away with the championship title at 145 pounds. We had originally had him ranked at 152 because I assumed that's where he was going to start the season, but he's at, at 145 and comes away with the championship title. Uh, beats Cal Reichert from Cumber Valley, who was a, a state qualifier a year ago. But the big news, in my opinion, if, in fact, I think in everyone's opinion, had to be at 152 pounds. So l- let me paint the scene here, the paint the picture for you, Eric. Garrett Ninehouse from Canaan Mac. We saw him wrestle down at the Super 32. Wasn't able to get on the medal stand at Super 32, but still had a, a pretty solid performance. He was number three on our top incoming freshman report. So it's Bo Bartlett one, two was Sammy Hillegas, and three was Garrett Ninehouse. Um, Garrett comes out here and just absolutely impresses me beyond belief here. Uh, he comes out with a major decision, uh, then a, another major decision. 
Then he meets Riley Palmer from Council Rock South. So if you know anyone about Riley Palmer, Riley Palmer is pretty tough. Sort of like District, yeah, absolutely. Sort of like District Eleven, right? <laughs> Riley Palmer, uh, one of the top ranked guys in the state last year, uh, is a state medalist. He wasn't able to get on this podium last year at, at uh, the state tournament, but Nyhouse comes out and beats him eight three. Riley Palmer's the top seed. He's the returning champion from the the kickoff classic. Nyhouse says. No, not so fast. You know, I'm, I'm a freshman, but I, I'm going to be uh, the next top guy. He comes out, beats him 8-3 uh, in, in the semifinals. But then then he comes back in the finals. He beats Will Caldiz from Cumberland Valley, <laughs> uh, a three-time state qualifier, a senior. Will Caldiz, Nyhouse comes out and pins him in four minutes and 32 wow. seconds. Um, so, yeah, a pretty awesome debut. Uh, it just – Incredible debut for a guy to beat two high quality, two top seniors in the state um, for a freshman at 150. So you're saying our, our, the top three top incoming freshmen, Bartlett, Hillegas, and Nyhouse all One win champion. titles at their all, respective tournaments. That is correct. Whoever came up with this top incoming freshman was genius. Re, gen, probably really good looking too. <laughs> if we're, we're going to go. Wait, there. did you have somebody else do them? <sighs> Eric, you're funny. So Nyhouse, I mean, talk about a, an opening opening performance for him uh, at, at at 152 pounds. Palmer comes back to finish his third. Um, pretty impressive for for him. I'm interested to see how this you know how this continues on because he, I mean at power eight he's going to be facing the toughest guys in, in his home gym. So uh, very excited for for this this freshman. Is he a guy that you expect to stay at 52, or is he someone that you think might be dropping? No, I can. I was. I, I'm pretty surprised he was at 52 to start. Uh, you know, he I, I, he could drop, but uh, he looked good at 52 down at Super 32. I mean, in terms of he looked big and he looked, uh, you know, okay for the weight. So, um, you know, for a guy who's 14, 15 years old. Um, you know, he's probably going to be putting on more weight than he is losing. So uh, I wouldn't be – I mean, clearly he can hold his own at 152, uh, 152 pounds having defeated two of those top guys. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay there. Um, so that's bad news for anyone at 152. <laughs> Josh Stillings from Penridge, uh, junior, he came away with the championship title at 160 pounds, didn't really have any trouble at all, picked up two tech falls, a fall, and a, a major decision at 160 pounds. Uh, for Penridge, 170 pounds. Quentin Milliken from Cumberland Valley, junior, also a junior, uh, comes away with a championship in his home gym. 170 was a tough weight, in my opinion. Blaze uh, Kansko from Canada Mac was there. He was a, a champion last year at the kickoff classic. Uh, Ty Bagali uh, from Exeter, he advanced into the finals, beat Kansko 5 nothing, and then falls to Milliken 8 7. So, two District 3 guys doing battle at 170 pounds. Uh, so pretty, pretty good, you know, outlook for, for district three, Doug Zapp, I'm sorry, not Doug, his brother, Cole Zapp from Downingtown. He wins the, the title at 182 pounds, uh, beats Easton's Ethan DeRizno, the Dorenzo. I'm sorry. Uh, Zapp comes away with the title at, at 182. Cole Nye, Bish McDevitt, returning state champion. There's less of him here this year because he's yeah, I, I know. I saw him at the, uh, the media day in, in Harrisburg a few weeks ago. And he's looking slim and trim. He's looking good. Uh, yeah. His dad sent me a picture of him flexing um, and without a shirt on. And he, he looks solid. I will tell you. He looked – I mean, I hate to say it because Cole's one of those guys I like to pick on. Um, but he, he looked good. And, and clearly he wrestled well. He won the championship title uh, at 195 pounds. Had a tough semifinals match with Cole Forster from Shippensburg. Beat him 3-2 but then came away with a fall in the finals. Over Jake Kuzer from Northern, who's who's no slouch. So uh, Cole's Cole's obviously wrestling well. It'd be interesting to see if he stays there. Um, you know whether he goes up. I don't know how bad the cut is for him, but uh, I, I believe what he told me was yeah he he wants to stay there because he's he's already you know two twenty is such a weird weight whenever you're a, a senior especially because then you got to start looking at college. Okay, am I going to bump up to two eighty five? You know, am I really ready for that? Or do I need to make the cut all the way down to 197? Yeah, I know he's projected to be a 197. He know I, I know he said he wants to be a 197 uh, college wrestler. So this is probably just a good start for him to, to wrestle. And that, yeah, I and think that's, that's what it is. He wants to get a jump on that, get used to that weight, you know, get his his body to that shape and that size, and kind of keep it there instead of 
maybe ballooning up a little bit and, and putting on weight when you can can jump up to 220. Yeah. Uh, back up to 220. Right, exactly. Um, state medalist Joey Doyle from Council Rock South wins at 220. Uh, no problems there. So he pins in the first period in all three of his matches. Uh, he had no, no issues. Uh, Brandon Furman from from Cannon Mac, who we saw win a Super 32 championship. Uh, Brandon was able to come away with a uh, kickoff classic championship and, again, just dominate. Uh, two falls, three falls, and a major decision. In fact, he beat Cameron Tyner from Shippensburg, who was a state qualifier last year. Uh, pretty tough tough individual. He comes away with a 17-4 major decision. So a big man putting up some big points. And Cornell looking better and better every time with that, aren't they? Uh, they, they sure are. I, mean, I like I like him a lot. I've, I've they jumped on him early before. You know, they really got the the name out there, and he just continues to impress. Yeah, he. Had, I I've been high on him for a long time. I think he's going to have a, a terrific year for for Cannon Mac, who's who's going to be pretty solid. So yes, District Eleven is good, but the the Whippio has some some pretty tough guys as well. And Cornell guys are smart. Yes, that's that's a fact. That is that is <laughs> that is also also very true. Um, some other tournaments that that went on the the uh, top hat tournament uh, wasn't a whole lot of surprises there uh, for in my opinion in terms of um, you know who who finished out on top. Uh, there was there was some very close matches. Uh, Baldy Gary I thought had a, a good good showing. Jimmy Hoffman from Hazleton uh, came away with a, a big win over Seth. Um, Colno from Baldy Guaria came away with a 7-2 decision. Uh, two, two guys who have state medals to their name. At 145 pounds, Sammy Hepler from Tri-Valley had a big win over a uh, really tough freshman, Gage McClanahan from Baldy Guaria. He came away with a 4-1 decision over, over him in the finals at 145. So a uh, pretty big win for, for him, for some Sammy Hepler, who's going to Lock Haven. Um, Luke McGonigal from Clearfield, won at 182 pounds. He beat Julian Goring from Fort LaBeouf, 3-2 in the finals. And then returning state champion Gavin Hoffman, who's uh, wrestled at 195. He, he came away with a, a championship title with a tech fall. So uh, a good good matchup there if, if Gavin Hoffman and, and Cole Nye uh, end up meeting. Oh, yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a fun one to watch. Yes, it, it, it would be, Eric. Um Brandywine Bullet, the Brandywine Bullet Invitational, Central Dolphin pretty much just dominated that one. Um, they, they came away with a, a whole bunch, I think seven champions. Um, I'm still waiting to see Solenko Mule Classic results. I haven't gotten those yet. Um, Hickory Tournament, the Hickory Invitational, some some you know notable results there. Go, uh, Gabe Willichell from Willichell from La Trobe. Uh, he comes away with a 13-4 decision, major decision in the finals at 106 pounds, beating uh, Will Burgess from Union City, who's who's no slouch. So, uh, again, some some freshmen that that you know we we are, are high on are performing well. Yeah, Latrobe had a couple of nice performances there. Uh, I know they've they obviously lost a lot from last year, but uh, Mike Ciotti looks like he's got some some good young talent in there as well. Speaking of Latrobe losing a lot. Uh, we, Luke Pletcher, who's now at Ohio State and who's now the starter at 141 pounds for Ohio State Buckeyes, uh, he was actually at the Ironman, as was all of Ohio State's lineup, including Kyle Snyder. Uh, Luke lost a tooth. He has a well, front tooth completely out, completely missing. Uh, it's kind of hilarious. Was that a practice injury? or? Yes, yes. Completely lost a tooth. It looks. I saw him in action against Wisconsin the other night and looked uh, looked pretty solid there. Different, definitely a contrast in styles. I don't know if you saw that. But yeah, I did. And and it, the, the guy from Mizzou, I mean, he was tall. He was really yes, tall. And, 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 his, uh, and he, Luke's he's about uh, six two. It looked like. And, and Luke's uh, five two. One pounds. So. Luke, Luke's five two. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's funny because I after uh, Sammy Sasso pinned his his opponent in the finals, Luke was standing there. And I went up to him. I said, "Hey, you and Sammy want to go at it for six minutes? I mean, considering you guys went, you know." <laughs> back back and forth last year uh you know so it's just hard to believe that luke you know just a year ago was, was finishing his career uh winning his third state championship for for latrobe and now starting for the for the uh the buckeyes and, and tom ryan there so uh pretty excited to see how he does in his career um there and and i know he just got thrust into the, the lineup uh coming up from 133 pounds so uh, it'll be fun to watch him progress this season yeah, it'll be a great uh, great test for him. Uh, I know I heard a little bit of talk about it before. You know, if he had redshirted this year, then he's going to come back next year and going to have to sit basically behind Tomasello anyway. So 
Yeah, and you know it's not really realistic to expect him to to go beat out Nathan Tomasello right away. But uh, so this year he'll get the get the experience at 141, get to to see how he does there. A little bit bigger weight than than he probably should be at. But then next year he can take the red shirt while Tomasello is finishing out his senior year and then be ready to come back uh, uh, the the following year at 133 as the starter. So uh, unfortunate for Keyshawn Hayes, but uh, you know great backup to have in place there and Luke Pletcher. Yeah, not too not too shabby there. Uh, I guess we'll stay on the topic of, of college. The, the PSAC tournament took place, um, and a lot of Pens- former Pennsylvania wrestlers were there. And we talked about Solanco and the Mule Classic, which I'm, I'm still waiting re- for results on, on that, um, so we can't really go over that. But two former Solanco wrestlers did pretty well. Ronald Perry, uh, Ronnie Perry came away with the championship at 141 pounds. Um, and Thomas Haynes, former four-time state champion from Lock Haven, or you know, now at Lock Haven, uh, formerly of Solanco, he came away with the championship title at 285. So, uh, two big performances out of some former Solanco mules. Yeah, I didn't get a get a chance to look over that. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now, see if I can see the uh, the results there. Uh, not surprisingly, Edinburgh kind of dominating there, but. Uh, yeah, some some definitely interesting stuff. Yeah, Dakota Gear from Edinburgh, uh, former state champion from from Pennsylvania, he finishes uh, top at 184 pounds. Uh, Evan DeLong from Clarion wins at 165. Ty Shoffsall from uh, Tri Valley, he's in Edinburgh, he finishes uh, champion at 174. So, you know, Cody Law from Pitt Johnstown, the the transfer from Penn State, now at, at Pitt Johnstown, he wins the the championship at 157. Um, a lot of a lot of former Pennsylvania guys here and, and doing well. Corbin Myers, state champion from Bullen Springs, he he wins the 133 pound bracket. So uh, it's nice to see these these Pennsylvania wrestlers uh, progressing and doing well uh, on the next level. Yeah, and uh, you know the those teams, uh, the Lock Havens, you know a guy like Thomas Haynes, that uh, unfortunate uh, at, at Ohio State to have a guy named Kyle Snyder there as well, couldn't get in the the lineup there. But I think he's going to be a, a real player. Whenever it comes to, to Division One, you get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'm interested to see how he does. Yeah, me, me too as well. And uh, it'd be nice to see come come that postseason how far he can go because he was one of the guys where you know one of the top guys in the nation for year after year. Uh, you know, he did battle with Kyle Snyder uh, many times, and um, I, I just I wish Tom is the best on, on and off the mat at, at Lock Cave. And um, I was I was able to go to the Lehigh Penn State match up in State College at the Bryce Jordan Center last weekend. Uh, big big time performance from from Penn State, uh, but also really good performance by Pennsylvania wrestlers in, in general. Scotty Parker at 133 pounds, I thought he had a, a phenomenal showing uh, against Cortez. Jason Nolf and Zane Rutherford did what they do, uh, came away with s- some pretty impressive performances, and, and Vincenzo Joseph also was able to. to collect a, a win for the Nittany Lions as they, they stopped Lehigh. So, um, again, as we, we just said, it's nice to see these guys doing so well in the next level. So that wraps up the, the college and, and high school preview for this this open weekend of high school wrestling, uh, continued action of college. Yeah, and we were able to, uh, to last weekend, talk to a couple guys that, uh, that are going to be getting to that next level next year at our uh, media day. We had uh, C.J. Manley, who stopped by. We'll have uh, uh, an interview with him coming up in a little bit, and Max Murin as well. Uh, Max going to Iowa, CJ to, to Virginia Tech. And uh, the media day, I thought, turned out really well, uh, thanks to all the coaches who were able to come out. Uh, a lot of coaches in districts 5, 6, and 7 were able to, to stop by, bring some of their top wrestlers. And it was really a nice event. Most of them uh, really enjoyed it. We tried to keep it loose, have some fun. But we were able to bring them out, get them to talk with some, some other newspapers. A, a TV outlet was there. You know, just try to get wrestling a little more exposure especially from some publications that you know might not necessarily know about it as much uh make it easy for them to have a bunch of people there that they could interview all at the same time without a whole lot of effort and you know as i said the the coaches and the wrestlers really seem to enjoy themselves and the opportunity to uh to get their name out there a little bit and get a little bit of coverage and I think that's what it all comes down to. Is I mean, we're, our goal here at, at PA Power Wrestling is to to grow wrestling uh, on the Pennsylvania level, but at all levels. And one of the biggest things about the media day was just to get that exposure and get those people excited. Because uh, I mean, they do it for football, they do it for basketball, um, they do it for for most sports, and wrestling should be, should be it there as well. Um, I've been to to several different media days uh, throughout the state, and I thought 
you know, and Eric and I both thought, well, there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to have something like that here in our own backyard. And obviously not every single team was able to attend. We invited, I mean, close to, to 50 teams almost from the, the surrounding area at Pitt Johnstown. But for those teams that showed up, I mean, we, we just, I thought we had a great time. We did, and we were able to get a lot of information. I mean, you know, selfishly from our standpoint, it helps so much whenever you're trying to put together rankings and and look at things to have a roster there and have projected weights. Now, we know some of the coaches get a little cagey sometimes with what they put down for their weights, but it at least gives us an idea. Like I was able to run to uh, run into uh, Cole Sawsong from uh, Portage, who was a, uh, a regional qualifier last year at, I think, 126. He's, he's all the way big. up to 160 now. Yeah, yeah he's big. He grew like eight inches yeah, he's big. Uh, so you know these are the things you don't know if you're just looking at last year's results and trying to figure out what's going on you don't realize how much these kids have grown or who's still at the same weight how anybody's looking so yeah it's really nice to be able to get out and meet with them on a one-on-one basis even for a few minutes ahead of the season yeah, absolutely, Eric. And it was it was a great time, and I appreciate all the the help that we had. Uh, my father, Tom Upson, was there helping out, uh, even in his his bright old age. And and your sister was able to to, to help out uh, tremendously um, to, to to help us facilitate that that uh, event. And we look forward to doing it again. I think this is something that we want to continue to do. And um, if it helps wrestling, if it helps wrestlers and coaches and, and the sport in general, we're all for it. We'll put in the work and we'll, we'll do it. And, you know, coach Pat Bacor was, was phenomenal in his, his, uh, the, his help and assistance to us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope that this is something that continues to grow. You know, I'm hoping that we can get some more reach into to District 7 a little bit, get some more of those schools to come out, maybe some of the, the eastern end of District 6, get some teams that, that realize, hey, this is a worthwhile effort, uh, you know, and get more media people there as well so that they can get the word out in those areas. You know, I'd love to see some some people from the eastern end of District 6 come into the media day from, from a newspaper or a TV station or, or whatever, and the same thing from from the pittsburgh area you know you get into westmoreland county and allegheny and and get some of those there and and get some exposure for them as well yeah you're you're right eric and um speaking of my my father tom every after every podcast he always says i I say one word about 40 times during the podcast i think this week it's going to be phenomenal i'm pretty sure i said phenomenal probably 30 times during this podcast so every every week it's like a different word so i'm I'm excited to see what next week it's going to bring well at least you're not repeating the same word over and over again i mean articulate is is an understatement to describe me (laughs) and one that's never been used to describe you that that's a, that is also a fact. That is a fact. Uh, yeah, the media day was was great, and and CJ Manley was was kind enough to sit down with us and talk to us. Uh, so we we're we we're pretty excited to talk to him. And um, you know, without ado, let's let's hear from CJ. All right, special guest here at the uh, PA Power Wrestling Media Day is, is CJ Manley uh, from Altoona, decked out in the the Virginia Tech gear today. Um, CJ, how are you doing today? Good. I'm good. Well, you're uh, you're in a position where you're, you've you've not been before where you're injured uh, before the season started. Can you talk a little bit about the the labrum and and uh, what it's been uh, like for you? Uh, it hasn't been that bad, honestly. It's, honestly, I've been not a long recovery. But it's supposed to be six months usually, but I've been ahead of schedule and stuff recovery wise. And I'm doing everything right. I've been listening to my doctors, haven't rushed anything, and back to drilling now is nice. I just feel really strong. With it. And I, f- I forgot that the, when it actually happened was at the, the Virginia Beach Duels, and you had a really good Virginia Beach Duels tournament down there, uh, beating uh, Gomez, and, and uh, you had some other quality wins. Talk about that, that off offseason uh, before the injury and how that was going, especially that day. Uh, it, it was going good. I was wrestling a lot. I made the injury happen because I was wrestling a little too much. That was like my sixth weekend in a row wrestling, but I mean, it was really, I was having a really good tournament and had a beat two quality guys before that. I had a, a Tariq Wilson from Ohio, and I beat him 5 nothing. and that was a pretty good win. And Gomez, which I wrestled him twice before, and he like hit me before and beat me back. But, and uh, I beat him 13-9, I was just like really pumped up. And then I wrestled Wilson, or not Wilson, uh, Teamer, and he's really good. He's like seventh in the country, and uh, that was like my fifth match of the day. I mean, it, he was just so long. I was like shooting on him, and he was like doing splatles and weird stuff to me. <laughs> and, 
I probably knew I was going to get hurt going into it. And uh, he tried to front headlock and like take me over, front headlock and arm, and uh, I slipped my arm. I didn't give it up. I thought that was pretty good, but I guess I should have. But I slipped my arm out, and that ended up happening. Finished the match, but that ended up happening after. Now, going into the season, you, you're obviously, you, you, you've been to the, the state finals before. You, you've done very well for yourself. What's the, how do you want to end your, your career at Altoona? Uh, I just want to end just doing everything right this year and just making sure I have everything in order and everything good and ultimately to win a state title. But really just not really looking more to that, just kind of looking to get everything right, do every little thing first and not really do it. I don't think too much about winning. More just think about what I have to do to do it. The timeline what you look like as far as uh, as far as the injury goes. When are you? Where are you right now? When do you expect to be back to one hundred percent? Um, I am like back to drilling now. Uh, about about a month and a half more, and I'll be back to full live like matches actually. And about Christmas time, I'll be back to live and practice, and I'll pace myself for that. And, uh, mid January, back to live. Right now, I'm, I'm in the we just back to getting my shoes on, just wrestling again. Like, at first it was doing nothing, then it was, well, first it was getting my motion back, and I got that back four weeks after the surgery. And then it was getting my strength back, and I'm still working on that, and everything and stuff, but I'm working hard with that. And I was just getting the movement and everything back and feeling right. How, how does it feel for you just the, having the pressure off, having committed to, to Virginia Tech and, and the Hokies, uh, who are doing pretty well uh, for themselves? What what is it like just for you to have that that decision already made under your under your belt? It feels good because like I mean that was obviously a, a worry of mine like going out like I don't want to be undecided and not knowing what to do. So it's nice to have that and also the motivation because I really love it there. Just want to keep improving, and doing better. And, I mean I don't want to do bad. So I think I'm like a chump when I get there. I want to do good. So uh, I go and leave Altoona hot and go in there on a hot streak and keep it going. Here. CJ, what was it about about Virginia Tech that really drew you in and made you know that that was the place for you? Um, I just I love the campus. I love the teammates and uh, their facilities. Are, they have like all stadium yeah. facilities and the coaches. Like, the, like dresser, he's from Iowa national champ. Zadik, Iowa national champ. He's crazy, but he's all John. He's from Iowa. And then we got Ruby. And Ruby actually made the house visit to my house, and he. Like, I never really. Like, I had talked to college coach before, and like with him, I was, I was comfortable. I was talking about like, past stuff, and I knew like I was that comfortable talking to a college coach. I knew like, that was a good choice for me. Uh, you and Max know each other pretty well. What's it like him going to Iowa, you going to Virginia Tech, and that rivalry that they've got going on? You guys have, talking all about that? Uh, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, I just kind of compared to Max. I said Max, who's the hot guy? Pretty much the same thing, honestly. As so, I like, keep telling him. You're not. You're not, unfortunately not going to be able to wrestle him for the fourth time this this season. Um, you, you've you've guys had a lot of battles back and forth, and they always seem to be tight. Um, so what's what's it been like growing up and, and wrestling with Max? Oh, it's been it's been great. We all push each other. We wrestle each other at Young Guns, and that's, that helps us. And it, it's kind of hard wrestling each other in match because we just know each other so well. And, but it, it's great to wrestle each other early in the match. Like I'm all for wrestling teammates early because really I'm not gonna get my feelings hurt if I lose. Mm-hmm. It's, one, it's a good benchmark to see where I'm at. And last year I lost some ride out to him, and that was just a good benchmark. I was like, all right, I know what I gotta do. I know where I'm at, and uh, and we, we practice like the next day. I think with each other. I mean, it, it's good to have a partner like that not too far from me. Like we'll go up to Jody's house and practice. And that's only like 20 minutes away from my house. And it's just nice to have someone, someone that good. Like he's fifth in the country. Like I'm 10th at 32 and, uh, on the internet. And it's, just, it's nice to have that connection not too far away. Uh, and talking about just ending your season last year um, as, a, as a junior, uh, you had a very, very solid tournament. Um, uh, talked to you, you beat a lot of tough guys. It was a, it was a tough weight class. Um, does that does that help you just in that in that confidence building uh, and getting to that state level, that state gold? You saw, you know, obviously you were in a bracket with Karam, uh, a, a very tough bracket. Uh, yeah. I have a lot more confidence going this year than I did last year. Last year, to tell you the truth, I really didn't have much confidence going in. Uh, after Christmas, my coach told me he's going to bump me up and have me wrestle every good kid from every team. I, I 
Maybe I am going to be. Maybe. I was like, well, it, even then, I was like, maybe it was like, like I don't know. Like, I knew, because like in Young Guns, he would always just beat on me, and I was like, I was a little nervous going in, and then I was like, okay, we got that one done. And then uh, I just had a couple other ones, and I had, uh, I wrestled Mason Lindema, who is at Penn mm-hmm. State now, and he, he's, he's just big and he's tough. And I wrestled him at West Branch, and I was like, oh. Like that was, I was on like a kind of a streak right there, and I was like, maybe this where it ends. Like he, I was watching. I was like, he's huge. He, he beats me in Young Guns too. I was like, I don't know. And then uh, I, I beat him every time. And then once I won that one, I, I was really, I, I got a lot of confidence after winning that one. Like finishing like that season, and I wrestled Carnell Andrews my last match of regular season, and I was at 38. And uh, like after I beat him, like he, I, I wrestled him all the time. He's cool, but after I beat him, he, he was. Uh, that was like. I got a lot of confidence going into the postseason. I felt like I re- my coach did a good job and had bumped me up against everyone possible to, that I, that would push me. And uh, I came out on top. It surprised me at first. I came out on top every time. And uh, I went into postseason with a lot of confidence. And, like, the kids that I would wrestle freshman year that I'd only beat, like, 4-1, I'd beat them, like, 16-1 in district first round and stuff. And I was just, like, I had, like, a chip in my shoulder kind of going into it. And that's how I had a lot of confidence. And then... I hit uh, the state tournament, and I was really nervous getting that because that bracket had, like, just kids like Luke Landefeld and, like, mm. just good kids like that. Like, growing up, I was, like, those kids all would beat me and stuff. And going in, I was, like, I better show up this weekend. I might not even place. So uh, my first match, it, I forget the kid's name, but I beat him 10-5. I was, like, all right, that's, I could have finished better. Then I had Ethan McCoy, and I was, like, he, he took third last year this way. He's pretty tough. And I, I was like, I had to warm up real hard. I was just really nervous for that. And I won 7 4 there, and I was like. You controlled that match. That yeah. Was... Yeah, I, I did. I, I didn't really. Th- like, I did a good job, I think, last year of not just trying to win. I was just trying to just, just do what I usually do and just try to just score points and not really worry about the outcome as much as just worry about what I got to do during the match and just focus on the little things. And, like, after I beat him, I was like, all right, this is cool. And then I had Karim, and right. uh, that didn't end too good for me. He was he, he was good. He was yeah, he good. was tough. And uh, so I dropped down. and I had uh, Wade Cummings, and he I know he really was really tough. good. He's like 13th in the country at the time. I was like, oh, this kid's good. Like, and uh, I beat him like seven two, and I was like, jeez, <laughs> like I don't know. And then uh, Olsen for third and fourth, and that, that ended up in a pin. But I, I choked him out at the end. So I don't know if I, like it could have gone, it could have ended differently. So sure, I like to wrestle him again too. So. But that was it was nice to get that like just like it was weird just comparing that feeling at the end like wow like I beat some good guys like I had right. a really good season from the beginning of the year I was like I don't even know if like I, I might not even have a good season this year but I had a lot of confidence after that and then now just going into this season I have a lot of, I beat like you said I wrestled Austin Gomez I beat him uh, I, I took my losses over summer and stuff like that but I beat him I I, just ha- I have a little chip in my shoulder going in, but I'm also, like, grounded, but mm-hmm. I know that I should be fine. Right. Now, you look like you're probably going to end up going around uh, 32 again, mm-hmm. uh, 32. Uh, you, you wrestled a lot of 38 last year, um, and, and this year um, you're getting a little bit of a late start. Is, is it hard for you to, to manage that weight when, when you're not wrestling, or is, have you found that you're – your weight's still uh, pretty much under control. It's really under control. For surprisingly, like, around my surgery time, I was checking my weight, like, after surgery, and I was only, like, 136, and I was like, jeez. Like, <laughs> last year, this time, I was, like, 48. Like, I don't know how I was in this light, and I'm, like, 41 right now, 40, and I've been lifting and stuff, and I'm like, oh, 34, not going to be an issue at all for me. Uh, it's going to be just pretty easy. Not, it's nice not having weight as an issue. As, like, sophomore year, I was cutting to 106, and that was just not fun at all. Like, I would go into practice with sweats on, not really worrying not, about getting yeah. better, worrying about the weight. Do you think I lose this practice? And it's, I wasn't in the right, my mind wasn't right. And, I mean, the outcome, honestly, I'd rather take a third place at a bracket like 26 right over a second place at 106. Because right. last year, I was more focused on getting better all season, which I know I, I did. And I didn't care about my weight because I knew it would just take care of itself. And I actually had a good diet last year. And I'm on that again now. So everything's just going good. 
Talk about your, your expectations for Virginia Tech. We were we were talking earlier about the the lineup. I mean, just a bunch of studs down there. And uh, you know, what, what do you what, what's what's the the goal for you going into to Virginia Tech? Uh, well, the goal is pro- to prove that I can get better. Because I know when I get there, I'm definitely going to get my Improve. butt beat pretty bad. Yeah. So uh, I'm that I'm gonna, I'm going to need that, and that's going to be nice to have someone, not just someone, probably like a lot of people, a handful of people beating up on me. And just have kind of in my mind, just putting a target on their back, even if they're my teammates, I'll be told with them at, right. during practice, putting a target on their back, trying to just get better. Because we all need someone like that that we're chasing, that we, we want to beat and we want to take down. And maybe it'll start from I want to get on this guy's leg and I want to take him down, mm-hmm. whoever it is in the room. And I know that's going to make me a lot better. Well, Cole, we, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time out for the, the PA Power uh, podcast and, and coming down the media day. I hope you hope you enjoyed yourself here at the at the media day and uh, got to get some exposure for the sport. So we look forward to, to seeing you this season and, and wish you the, the a speedy recovery uh, back to the mat. We we look forward to, to seeing you back there. Thank you. All right, Looking thanks, forward. CJ. Again, thank you very much, CJ, for sitting down with us and talking to us at the the media day there. Uh, You heard all in the background a lot of noise there. A lot of people were there having a good time. We did a little hula hooping challenge, uh, and no one was injured, which is a win. Uh, but yeah, also, as a whole, though, I got to say, wrestlers are not terrible hula hooping. What for guys that have good hips? I mean, that that's <laughs> like you know you expect the good wrestlers to have good hips. No, they're terrible. They were terrible at it. I mean, I mean, uh, most of the guys could not hula hoop for more than three, three seconds. seconds. It was. Te- I mean, honestly, I was very disappointed with some of the the, the hula hooping action that we had. I thought for sure we were going to have to get a, a timer and actually, you know, dissect how many times, you know, how long people went. No, not at all, because it was. But just, it was entertaining. Oh, it was. It was. It was very entertaining. And we gave out prizes, so the guys were actually trying. It wasn't that they they didn't have their heart in it. We had some PA Power uh, gear there that we were giving away, so they were doing their best to to try to hula hoop. Yeah, they it weren't. Just they wasn't weren't, happening. They weren't doing it there to impress the girls. They were just doing it just to to get get the prize. So, uh, yeah, uh, great time, phenomenal time. As for for the word of the week, it's almost like Sesame Street. We'll have a <laughs> a word of the word of the podcast. Maybe, so. maybe we can get a sponsor and have the uh, you know That'd word be great. of the day. That'd be great because then maybe we could quit our, our full-time jobs and do this full-time. Absolutely. But I digress. So, yeah, Phenomenal. great great job, Cole Manley, CJ. Looking forward to seeing him back on the mat. Uh, that's going to do it for us here at the PA Power Podcast. We are going to be doing uh, a preview of some big tournaments coming up this weekend. we got the Beast of the East, the King of the Mountain, uh, Sheets Holiday Classic, just a ton of, of tough tournaments coming up here. Um, you know, we, we want to get you some, some previews and information on all those tournaments. So stay tuned to, to PA Power Wrestling for all your wrestling needs. Uh, we are going to be uploading, uh, updating our rankings now that we have uh, where all the weights are and, and we have a lot of results pouring in. So uh, look for some updated and pretty uh, accurate, in my opinion, rankings to come out this week now that we have a better idea of the scenery. And Eric, how, did you survive your first week of doing rankings? Barely. Barely. I got to say that, yeah, this is the first time I've done it and it was much more difficult. I knew it was going to be difficult, but it was, it was rough. So I, I'm promised to be better in the, uh, the second week. Uh, as you said, we have some results now. We have a little more clarification on where guys are going to be weight wise. So I, I think I'm getting a, a little better, ha- better handle on it, but yeah, it was rough. Yeah. And you do one region and I do, <laughs> I, I do four regions and states, but that's, I'm not. I'm not going to try to compare us. You know, it's it's not possible. That's because you're phenomenal. That's, that's that's correct. Oh, Eric, it's been fun. It's. it's I'm glad wrestling season's back. So me uh, too. So uh, excited. Uh, great, great opening weekend. Visit PAPowerWrestling dot com for for all those wrestling needs. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and also I'll be doing a show every Monday, uh, co-hosting with Greg Warnock from the MSA Sports Network inside the Whippy Old Wrestling Circle. That's every Monday. Uh, from 7 to 9, and uh, you can find that here on PAPowerWrestling.com, uh, and, and that's a pretty good show where we break down all the whippy old action. So uh, never a shortage of com- uh, coverage. All right, wrestling fans, until next time, thanks for stopping in. We'll talk to you soon.